Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Mel. I'm here from VTAC. Um, welcome to this evening's Nursing and Midwifery webinar. The main aim of having this session is to assist applicants who are looking to apply for nursing and midwifery courses for next year. Um, the reason that VTAC run this webinar is to hopefully ensure that by the end of this session, you feel confident about placing your application and have all, all the information that you need. We've chosen to focus this webinar on both uh, current year 12, so what we refer to as uh, school applicants, as well as non-school leavers. So those are applicants who may have finished um, recently or a few years ago, or you may have uh, not studied for quite some time. So we've got quite a bit to get through in the next 30 minutes. Uh, thankfully, I am joined by a team of my colleagues here. You can see that we have a little Q&A button at the bottom. So you can use that throughout the webinar to ask any questions that you might have about any of the content that is presented uh, in the next half an hour. This session will also be recorded. So if we uh, run through anything a little bit too quickly for you, you can go back and have a look at um, any of the information. We do ask that when you put in uh, any uh, questions that you may have, that you try to keep those uh, more broad. We ask that you don't put any personal information into that Q&A box. If you do have any really specific questions um, about your application, you can actually contact our team directly um, and we'll have that, those details for you at the end of the webinar. So VTAC would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pays respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. So today's session will cover a number of different areas. So we'll look at key dates. We'll have a quick tour of the VTAC account, course requirements and the application process. And we'll look at the process of applying for special consideration, both season scholarships, course offers and those contact details. And as I've already mentioned, the webinar will be recorded and uploaded onto VTAC's YouTube page in the coming week. Because this webinar is for both current year 12s as well as non-school leavers, um, I'm first gonna go through the dates for current year 12s. These will slightly differ for non-school leavers. So at the moment, the application process for both preferences, Cs and scholarships are open. And the timely application period closes on the 28th of September and shortly after on the 6th of October, the season scholarship applications close. A date that's not up there, but it's important to be aware of is that VTA actually have a review guarantee. So if you are able to submit any supporting documentation by the 15th of September, VTAC will guarantee to look at that information um, and be in contact with you should there be any issues with any of the documentation you've provided. So, for example, if you're missing a supporting statement or if you are, um, your information isn't clear, then there's time for us to let you know, but also for you to resubmit that application by the 6th of October. On the 11th of December is when ATARs and results are released. And then the change of preference uh, closes again on the 13th of December for those December round offers. The first round of offers for current year 12s will be made on the 21st of December. And then once again, that change of preference will open for 24 hours between the 21st and 22nd of December. And as you can see, there will be subsequent uh, offer rounds in January and February. For non-Year 12 applicants, so similarly, the application process is already opened. Um, and we also have that guaranteed review date of the 15th of September. But the change of preference for non-Year 12 applicants closes on the 1st of November. Now, the reason for that is that we are not awaiting year 12 results. So there's slightly um, differing dates there. So offers for non-year 12 applicants close on the 17th of November at 2 p.m. 
sorry, not close, uh, offers are made on the 17th of November at 2 p.m. And then that change of preference period reopens on the 17th of November and closes again on the 5th of December. The subsequent offer rounds for non-Year 12 applicants are the same as current Year 12 students. So we're going to take a quick look now at the VTAC account and course requirements. Most of you have probably already been into your VTAC account, but I just want to highlight a couple of key points. So first of all, this little logo in the corner for uh, emails, this is where all the correspondence from VTAC will come through. So any information that we need to pass on to you will come via this email. Please don't um, I guess what we call set and forget, make sure that you go into your account on a regular basis to ensure that any information that we need to get to you is accessed. Your C's uh, application is here where the red arrow is pointing, scholarship applications, course application documents are uploaded here and C's and scholarship documents here. Very important for applicants for tonight is the nursing and midwifery declaration form, which you can see is highlighted in red on the bottom. So Core Search, a number of you will probably be familiar with Core Search as well. So Core Search is our search function that BTEC has developed. This allows you to compare course information across tertiary institutions in Victoria, not only for nursing and midwifery courses, but for all courses available. On the right, you can see that there are advanced search options, which you can filter by things like institution, area of interest and qualification level. So for the purpose of this presentation, we've just put in a nursing example. So we've used the key term nursing. We've come up with 46 courses across a range of institutions and qualifications. So there's a number of bachelor courses as well as diploma courses. And once you scroll through the list, there'll be certificate level courses as well. For each course that is available on the page, when you scroll down, there'll be a number of uh, tabs that you can click on. And one of those is course requirements. So this is a really key one um, so that you can ensure that you have everything you need to apply for the course. And it allows you to filter by who you are. So we've got, you would click on studying in year 12. Uh, if you've completed year 12 recently, but have done no further study, another tab for those who have started or completed a bachelor associate degree, completed a certificate diploma or advanced diploma or no further study or did not finish year 12. So it's a lot of information to take in, but you can see on the right, we do have a number of fact sheets, which you can access from our website, which will go through this in a step-by-step -step process. So this is just a quick example. We've selected a nursing course um, and then we have put in studying in year 12 in 2023. And that gives you an idea of the admissions criteria. So in this case, it goes through ATAR, VTAC personal statement, stat test, et cetera. Whereas when we look at somebody who may have completed um, a VET, then it tells you, you can see that the admissions criteria changes. So we're looking now for the entire academic record, VTAC personal statement, et cetera. So here's just a quick example of some of those uh, essential requirements and admissions. So there's prerequisites, there's essential requirements. So things like tests or also that nursing and midwifery declaration form, different admissions criteria, and then essential requirements for enrollment or graduation. So where this differs is these may be things you're required to do to successfully complete the course as opposed to just be admitted. So it'd be things like immunizations, a working with children check, police check, first aid, et cetera. So really key and something we uh, want everyone to be aware of is the nursing and midwifery declaration. Uh, applicants must complete this declaration form to be eligible for an offer into accredited nursing and midwifery courses. So VTAC will collect this declaration for all preferences. So you only need to complete this once. And this declaration will become visible on your VTAC account as soon as you list a nursing or midwifery course. So once you have put that onto your preference list, you will receive specific instructions and reminders via that email uh, through your 
uh, application. So there's three options for the nursing and midwifery declaration form. Option one is a primary language pathway. So this is if English is your primary language and you've attended and completed six years of primary and secondary schooling. Option two is the English test pathway. So this is where you agree to where you have either sat or are planning to sit an approved in English language test. And then option three is the APRA registration pathway. So if you currently hold one of the following registrations, um, then you would select option three. So um, we leave it up to you to determine which one is the most suitable for your application. So once again, you can see highlighted in yellow, the tab where it, the form sits, but also that red notification lets you know while you are in the application form that this must be completed and that failure to complete the declaration means you're not eligible for the course. So that red bar will remain within your account until you complete the form. So course application. So the first thing we want to talk about is pathways. So basically a pathway is an option of a course that can lead you into another course. And these are really important to add to your preference list in order to increase your chances of receiving an offer. So an example of this might be a diploma as a pathway into a bachelor degree if, for example, you don't have the requirements to get directly into the bachelor. And then a certificate for is another example of a pathway into a diploma. If you go into each of the individual courses through course search, it will give you options of pathways that you can utilise. So specific pathways for nursing and midwifery. So you can start with a certificate for in a range of different studies. And each of these options also has work opportunities at their exit points as well. So we've got various roles in the healthcare sector for a certificate. Then the next level is a diploma of nursing. So that's a lot more practical and hands-on and there's placement opportunities. So there's nursing positions that you can apply for once completing that. The next step may be enrolling in a Bachelor of Nursing or a Bachelor of Midwifery. Completion of those means that you're a registered nurse or a registered midwife and you'd be able to access those positions. And then finally, you may choose to go into graduate study. So they're options to extend yourself if you're wanting to specialise in a certain field. So more broadly, so this is applicable whether you are looking at nursing and midwifery courses or a whole range of courses, because we're very much aware that people might be applying for a whole um, a range of different courses through their VTAC application. So you have eight preferences, which you can utilize. Um, you don't have to use all eight, but we encourage you to use as many as possible that will allow you to pathway into your uh, course of choice. Your preference order is really important. So people are constantly trying to work out the system and ways to get around things and how they think that the, the system works list your courses in the order that you want to get into them. So number one should be the course that you most want to do. Don't worry about the course requirements or the ATARs or trying to work that out. Number one should be the course that you most want to get want to get into because you will only receive a maximum of one offer per round from the highest course on your preference list. So to add courses, you can see on the top there you select by institution, qualification level and then the course will populate and it will allow you to enter. You can move shuffle around your preferences during that course offer uh, change of preference period. You can move them around, you can add and remove them during those times and please ensure that you enter the correct course. So double check things like the location, the level of qualification to ensure that you're applying for the right course. So applying for special consideration and scholarships is another one that we strongly encourage you to have a look at. Our special entry access scheme is used by most tertiary institutions and one C's application will cover you for all the preferences that you put in. This basically relates to addressing circumstances beyond your control that may have impacted your uh, education. It also includes category one, which we'll talk to shortly. And it allows selection officers at each of the institutions to potentially grant special consideration for course entry. So we have four categories which you can apply for. Category one is personal information and location. This simply requires you to tick a box 
and it allows the institutions to access demographic data. Um, so we encourage all applicants to apply for this category because you may not know what each institution is looking for or where they might have targets. So this will allow consideration for a range of things such as uh, mature aged entry or uh, English as a first language and things like that. Category two looks at financial background. So if you have a disadvantage there, that will be addressed in category two. Category three looks at disability and or medical or mental health conditions. And category four is what we call difficult circumstances. So basically anything that has impacted your education that doesn't fall into categories one to three. So all of these categories, aside from category one, will require some form of supporting documentation. So for financial disadvantage, we would be looking at your own Centrelink reference number. If you don't have your own Centrelink reference or you're not receiving benefits directly to you, um, for example, if you're a current year 12 but your family receives Centrelink benefits, then you may need to upload um, documentary evidence from uh, a parent or guardian that is receiving the Centrelink benefit. And if you're facing financial disadvantage but you are not eligible for Centrelink, then you can provide an impact statement and a statement of support. Categories three and four um, look at, uh, require a statement of support and an impact statement. So the impact statement is written by the applicant, which explains why their circumstance has impacted their education. And the statement of support is uh, another person authorised to uh, verify these circumstances. You can see in the top breakout box, there's specific um conditions and circumstances where we don't require uh, an impact statement, but the CS process will uh, online will walk you through that, that uh, application process. So you will uh, use certain tick boxes, which will then advise you whether or not you need to uh, supply an impact statement. There's a lot of detailed information that you can find directly on our website. So scholarships. So VTAC also collects scholarship uh, information for uh, a number of institutions. They're not just for academic performance. So there's many equity scholarships and a lot of those use the same uh, criteria and documentation as C's. And statements must be ticked for both um, applications. Uh, a list of scholarships is available on the VTAC website and we do have information on scholarships which may require a separate application directly to the institution. So managing your application, just a few tips uh, as you go through the process. Um, check your VTAC account um, on a regular basis because that's the primary way that we'll communicate with you to make sure that your application is uh, ready to go. And for those uh, people tonight who are in year 12, um, just a reminder not to use your school email address because uh, in the new year when offers are made, you may not have access to that email account. So please use a personal address. Um, don't forget to pay. So we actually strongly encourage uh, everyone to pay where possible by that timely application period. That ensures that you're eligible for C scholarships and all the offer rounds. You can change your preferences within those uh, dates and they are all featured on our website. Once again, CS closes on the 6th of October and we do have that review guarantee if you submit your documents by the 15th of September. And just a reminder to upload all relevant documents. So offers. So there are two uh, different dates for offers. So depending on the date, whether you're a current student, current year 12 student or a non-school leaver, but this process is the same. So you will receive um, offer advice from VTAC on the day that your that offers are released, provide, um, if you are lucky enough to get an offer. Um, and those will be online from 2 p.m. Alongside that, you'll receive enrollment instructions from the institution that's made you an offer. So it's really important to read those through thoroughly because they will all differ depending on the institution that's made you an offer. So you need to make a we say a decision um, whether to accept, defer or reject that offer. But really, um, there's only really 
one option. So we do ask that you accept the offer. There really isn't a reason why you shouldn't be accepting an offer that's made to you, um, provided it's something you want to do. Deferring aligns with accepting. So you, if you wanted to defer your offer, you still need to accept it. And then each institution will have a process which you need to go by in order to defer that offer, whether you want to take um, six or 12 months off if that's available to you. Obviously, you can reject the offer, um, but if you've gone through this process, there isn't a reason really why you should be rejecting the offer. You will automatically be eligible for courses higher on your preference list. So in this sample here, we've got a student who has put in seven preferences. Um, and you can see here preference number four, so nursing at ACU is where they've been made their offer. Now, these three lower preferences, this student may actually have been made an offer for all four courses, but they will only receive the an offer and enrolment details for the highest offer on their list. Even if you know, I really, really want a number one, still accept offer, the offer you were made at preference four, because you will be eligible for one, two, and three automatically you don't need to do anything else if a place comes up in one of those courses and you're eligible in later rounds you will still be made an offer so even if you've accepted preference four you still will be considered for one two and three in later offer rounds so what if you don't get an offer um the first thing you uh that we would suggest is checking your course application in the vtac account um is your application fee paid? So it's important to note that if your fee is not paid, um, your application will not be forwarded to institutions. Um, have you provided all the relevant supporting documentation if you require it? So if you are a non-school leaver, have you submitted all your previous results? Um, have you completed the English declaration form? Whether or not you've met prerequisite requirements, and that includes study score requirements, and um, whether you submitted uh, any institution specific requirements and whether or not you're still waiting on final results from your current study. So those might be some things to consider if you do not get an offer at all. Um, if it's an early round offer, so in the case of year 12s at December round or for non-school leavers the November round, you may still get an offer in a later round. And this would be a time, again, to look at those pathway options. So if you haven't put pathways into your preference list, um, please look at doing those. Um, because it is only a short turnaround in terms of when the system opens again to change your preferences, uh, we would strongly advise contacting the institutions that you are wanting to get into and discussing with them the appropriate pathway options. So what they would recommend you look at uh, applying for. So a few handy hints, I know we've covered a lot of this already, but please complete that English declaration form. Keep an open mind about studies and do look into pathways, even if you're certain that you're going to uh, get one of your top preferences, things can change year on year. So have some of those pathways in there. Read each course information really carefully and make sure you complete all the requirements. Um, order your preferences in their true order. So number one is what you most want to do. Go through all that C's information as well. There's still uh, a couple of weeks to get uh, documentation in for that review time um, and a little bit more time to finalise application. So all those key dates and deadlines you don't need to remember, they're all featured on our website. And check your VTAC account on a regular basis for emails um, and messages and reminders. And please do reach out to our team um, if you need any help. So we actually do on our website also have a dedicated page for uh, applicants interested in nursing and midwifery. So you can go and look at some profiles. There's a link to course search, um, an explainer on the nursing and midwifery declaration form, information about pathways, as well as general uh, FAQs about applying. So there's the link to the uh, web page, um, our general VTAC website, which is vtac.edu.au. All the information that you've received tonight can be linked through from that page. Um, and then our dedicated line, which you can see there and again, play back on the video. So we have um, 
a whole team of uh, staff here who are here during business hours to answer your specific inquiries. They can have a chat with you and walk you through your specific application. They can log in and help you with that. Um, and you can also contact us via email directly through your VTAC account. So log into the VTAC account and send an email through there, or you can contact us via social media um, and subscribe to our newsletter. And before we um, wrap up, I am going to hand over to uh, Tamara from our team um, and she's going to go through some of the frequently asked questions that came up during this session. Thank you so much for that, Mel. Um, lots of engagement and interaction. So it's wonderful that you're also keen on um, uh, studying nursing and, and midwifery. So you will see in the common chat, I have put two links to the Victorian government to get more information about the Victorian government scholarships for nursing and midwifery students. There's deadlines there that students need to um, adhere to. There's processes in terms of the, um, the scholarships. So just to, um, I guess, clarify and provide some scaffolding Students are needing to apply for those Victorian government sponsored scholarships and they are open for any students who are commencing um, the nursing and midwifery course or programs at the start of next year, which most of you will be because that's the cycle that you're applying in. So there are two links in the chat that I've shared. Have a look at those. You'll need to do that in concert as a, and understand the requirements alongside your VTAC application. So that scholarship is from the Victorian government and sort of is a standalone item that doesn't necessarily, um, it's not part of your VTAC application. So just be mindful of that. Another question, Mel, people need to understand um, the process of being made offers across the rounds. And perhaps um, we'll give this example, perhaps I, I am uh, made an offer for my fourth course or fourth preference on my list. Let's say I get that offer on the 21st of December really great and exciting as Mel suggested please do accept that offer that is um you've popped it I've popped it on there for a reason it's because I want to do it so I'll accept that offer however I'm still in in the running to receive an offer for the courses that I have listed above that so course one two and three my preferences one two and three I am eligible and I will be considered for every offer round until the end of offers for those courses or programs so I might find myself um on the 30th of Jan in receipt of um, in receipt of an offer for my second most wanted preference. So what do I do then? So I've got an offer I've accepted in December, which was fourth on my preference list. And I'm lucky enough to now find myself with my second most wanted preference as an offer at the end of Jan. I need to accept that uh, course because I, I want to do it more than the original offer. So that's my second preference. I will accept it, complete the requirements that um, for accepting and enrolling that I need to as per the email and advice that has given, been given to me. And then I can just uh, circle back to that first preference that I uh, said yes to and let them know uh, that I'm no longer interested. They can free that place up that goes back into the pool. Someone else can take that uh, offer up and I'm very happy and satisfied that I was lucky enough to get my second preference. So please don't think um, that you're not going to be considered every round. If there are courses that are above the offered course on your list, you will be considered for those at every time. A lot of questions about do, do, do domestic Australian students need to complete the English language declaration, the midwifery nursing form? Yes. Even though you, you may um, only speak English, you're an Australian citizen, you've done all your study in English, you must let us know that by the successful completion of the English language declaration as part of your VTAC um, application. That's a mandated um, non-negotiable uh, component that has been put there by the Nursing Midwifery Federation. So um, there's no way around it. If you don't complete that, it's a mandatory requirement and therefore you won't find yourself in receipt of an offer. So it's not something that can be bypassed or, um, or not considered. Um, those were the main questions that people were asking on the chat. I would suggest, as Mel has said, if you find that you there's something that you still are not quite comfortable with uh, and you're in Victoria tomorrow morning from 9.30 till 5, double nine two six one zero two zero. If you're at school, you can call after school. If you're not at school, if you're working, 
maybe use your lunch break, give somebody a call. We've got a team of professionals who answer the phone. It's never more than about a two minute wait, if that, and they can step you through any specific questions you might have to your application, whether that be your course application or a C's application, et cetera. Um, I think that, um, oh, okay, right. People are um, writing to me that they can't see the links in the chat. I thought I had put them in this, this chat, but they have disappeared. So what I will do is I have got the um, list of the people who've attended. I can easily email those um, links out for the scholarship, the Victorian Government Nursing and Midwifery Scholarships. I'll make sure that I email those through. I think that's it from me, Mel. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for giving up your time. Um, it's an exciting time for all of you, and we wish you all the very best in putting your VTAC application. For those of you who are undertaking exams or um, are thinking about undertaking exams, best of luck. And please do remember, you're not alone in this. We're here to help you. We are a for-purpose, not-profit uh, company, limited by guarantee, an authorised a registered charity, it is our job to make sure that you are able to submit a completed and accurate VTAC application and you are well on the way to studying the course of your dreams to get to the career of your dreams. I'll hand over it back to you, Mel. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks, Tamara. Thanks, everybody, for your time tonight. Uh, just quickly, at the conclusion of this webinar, there will be a four-question survey. It just really helps us to find out if there was any information that maybe you didn't receive um, today, and it allows us to ensure that uh, we get all the information you need. Um, we hope that this was helpful, and uh, just to echo Tamara, best of luck with your applications. Thank you.